Welcome back to the Crochet Crown. So it's my friends at Jimmy Bean's Wool. Today I have a scarf that I designed and this was using Shepish Whirl. You will not use the entire ball. I crocheted this sample when I was on my air flight all the way from uh, Nova Scotia to Australia. I had most of it done, but I finished this while I was in Australia, New Zealand. So this yarn slowly transitions on its own. It's really fun to be able to do this and to watch it go. So you can see one side of the scarf is a different color because it's slowly changed over. If you'd like to use more of a mass retail brand, you can use Red Heart here. It's a wrap rainbow. It does the same thing. And this is a really beautiful scarf. It's 84 inches long. I wanted a longer scarf with some extra long uh, fringing here that I just used from my Shepherd's World at the end. You can see that the colors were the same because I pulled it from the same uh, ball uh, at the end of it here. So it looks very different. So this is a really neat concept. If you would like to do this particular one, um, it is, uh, um, a chaining of 40 but if you would like to change the size of this it's a multiple of seven plus five and so that's what we're going to begin today so let's grab our crochet hook and i'll be using a four millimeter size f crochet hook today which is what you should use for this and also i'll just be using some peyton's croy sock yarn just for demonstration purposes let's begin you can either chain 40 or do your multiples of seven plus five so to do the multiples it's one two three four, five, six, and seven. Happy, yes or no, if not, continue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Happy, yes or no, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there you go. So I'm gonna be saying I'm happy with the width, and once you're happy with the width, just add another five. So one, two, three, four, five. So this will now be in balance as you begin row number one. Row number one, we're gonna get ourselves just started and go in the back hump of the chain and start the second chain from the hook, so one and two. And you're just going to single crochet yourself all the way across. If you go in the back hump, it'll look nicer as the edge, but if you don't want to, that's up to you. Okay, so just single crochet yourself all the way across your chain and I'll be right back. So now just come all the way across. The beginning chain will feel a bit slow to you, uh, but once we've got this set up now, it's gonna get easier and easier as we go. Let's begin the second row. So the second row is gonna get ourselves set up on the shells. You're gonna chain one, and the first three in a row will be a single crochet each. So we have one, two, and three. And now you're going to skip two stitches and go to the third and you're going to apply five double crochets there. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Skip two on this one again and go to the third and single crochet in that one plus the next one. So there's gonna be two single crochets in a row. So we're gonna start again. So it's skipping two and put five double crochets into the next. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Skipping two, one and two, go to the third one away and single crochet that one plus the next one. So there's always two single crochets in between these shells. Skipping two, go to the third and you're gonna put five, your five double crochets and you're repeating this all the way across. I'm coming up to the edge in just a moment. So if you're not ready for that, just put me on pause. And if you're ready for it, here's what we're gonna have. We have the five double crochets in there, skip two, and you'll have three single crochets left to fill in. So just put one, two, and three. And turn your work. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Let's begin row number three. Row number three, you're gonna chain three. That'll be your first double crochet. That's what that counts as. And you're going to double crochet the next two stitches in a row. You're now going to chain two 
And do you see the middle one of the grouping of the five? It's the third one. So if you one, two, and three, it's the third one. You'll single crochet that one. And then chain two. And then you're gonna reach down for these two single crochets that are between the shells and just put in a double crochet each. So this is providing framework that you can see within the project. Chain two, come to the middle one of the grouping of the shells, single crochet, chain two, and then put a double crochet in each of the singles. So I need you to do this all the way across. If you're not ready for the ending, just um, put me on pause and everybody else, we're gonna keep on going. So just chain two, single into the middle, and chain two. And the last three are going to be a double crochet each. So just remember you got three stitches on the end. Okay, and this is the third row. So turn your work and now we're ready for the fourth. To move on, we're going to the fourth and now we're just gonna thicken this up. So we're gonna chain up one and put one single crochet into the first three doubles. And when we did those chain spaces, they were consisting of two chains. So you're just gonna plop in two single crochets around the chain and then a single crochet into the single and then you run into another chain again. So you're gonna put two singles around the chain. Here you got two double crochets, so they'll get one single each. And what you're just doing is matching the stitch counts so that it stays even. So two into the next chain two space, one into the next single, chain two space, and so on. So put me on pause if you're not ready for the ending. And we're going to show you that in a moment. And at the very end, we're going to come up and you still have your chain two before the end. So fill that in with two singles. And then you should have um, two double crochets in that chain three, which counts. So when you get that final chain three, make sure that you do put it into the chain work itself. Don't put it into a space. So just grab the top one here and single crochet in, and then you can turn your work. And now we're going to begin the repeating of five through eight. Okay, row number five through eight is your repeat through the whole thing. So we're gonna chain up one and you'll put uh, three single crochets to start. Okay, so one, two, and three. Now you're going to chain two, skip two, and single into the next. See where the single is? If you follow your eyes up, it's in the same positioning. So it makes it kind of easy to see it. Chain two and then skip two, and then you're gonna put two single crochets in a row. And those again match the framework that you see below. So chain two, skip two, and single into the next. Chain two, skip two, and then you need two single crochets in a row. So look below to see what the counts are so that you can do this quicker. So chain two, skip two, single to the next. And put me on pause if you're not ready for the ending. So chain two, skip two, and single crochet into the final three. And that was row number five. So turn your work and let's begin number six. Okay, number six, you're going to begin chain one and you'll single crochet into the first three. So one, two, and three, and then you're gonna reach over to this single right here, this lonely one right there, and that's gonna be five double crochet. And if you look below, the other one is already in that same positioning. So it helps you to know if you're doing it right. Okay, skipping two. Okay, so what I would do if I you don't even worry about saying that, just look for the two single crochets that are in a row and put two, uh, one into each of those two. Just match what you see. So this one here has to be a shell. So then it's five double crochet. So we have one, two, three, 
four and five and just look for the next two singles and put in singles there and then just reach for the next one follow it straight up with your eyes so you can see it five double crochets there so we have one two three four and five and if you're not ready for the ending just put me on pause and those that are ready the last three are a single crochet each and turn your work and now you're going to begin row number six row number six you're going to chain three that's your first double crochet and the next two in a row are double crochet each we've already done this before but for the repeating we need to show you again so then chain two and go to the middle one of the grouping of the shell, single crochet in, chain two, and look for the two singles that are between the shells right here. And you're going to apply two double crochets total, so one into each of those two, uh, two that you find. Chain two, one into the center of the shell, chain two, and then two double crochets in a row using the single crochets. This row is really quick no matter what size of the scarf that you're doing. Chain two, one into the center. Chain two. And then when you get to the end, like I am, the last three are double crochet each. Just turn your work. And let's begin and do number eight. So eight is the same concept of what we've done before. It's single crochet. So chain up one and apply one single crochet into each one of the stitches that you run into. And there is a chain two space. So that's right. You're getting two singles into each of the spaces first before jumping to the next available stitch. So this thickens it up and lets it lay flat when you have this and wearing it and also crocheting it. You see it's staying pretty flat. So you're just single crocheting across. So please do this all the way across and we're gonna talk about fringing in just a few moments. And the fringing allows the scarf to have flow. Um, if you do the fringing too long though, it becomes a pain in your ass uh, as far as like wearing it and catching it in zippers. So um, you have to determine what is the best formulation for you. Um, I liked it the length that I did it. Um, in the sense that I wasn't wearing a coat with it. I, I consider this more accessory than anything. So you have to determine your how you're wearing it, of course, and you don't want to wear it around machinery or anything like that so it doesn't get stuck into something. So what I just did is that I made the fringe, and the fringe is just whatever length that you would like to do. That one I think was pretty generous. I think it was actually um, 16 inches and there's three strands of that and it's folded into a fringing format. And then I just randomly, or like just evenly spaced it across the edging. And once I determined one side and how I wanted to do it, then I repeated the same thing for the other side. And so with different sock yarn, uh, it can look very different like this. It can be artistic and you have to determine what you prefer, I guess, at the end of the day. So this is the Ascot scarf and designed by me and that I hope that you enjoy. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.